What's up, guys? I'm Drew with Comics Elite here with Kyle, not Kevin. It's time for the top 10 of the week. Yay! The Yay. good stuff. Yeah, the good stuff, the stuff that we're not going to tear, the stuff we actually did enjoy. There was some really good stuff this week. Very, very, very good stuff this week. Uh, so, everything in the Skibbits and Mez, please ignore like the plague, unless you like the stuff with the key factor. Uh, other than that, there's no reason to, to look at those or get those. But for punishment? Yeah, if you're, you are a glutton for punishment, yeah, like a lot of people are, like Dark Crisis for Young Justice. They like yeah. bending, they like spending money on items for which they're being mocked for as a reader. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Fun. By all means. Um, in the meantime, do remember to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell. It's down there somewhere, usually. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Top 10 of the week. Uh, number 10. Okay. Of the week. I have Nightwing, number 397. Christ. I have Aquaman and Drama Destroy. Jesus Christ, Kyle. I cannot believe you have I can't believe you Nightwing. have that. I can't believe Aquaman and Dromeda is your top in your top ten. You're gonna try to really? compare these two. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Really? Yes. Uh Ow. well for first thing, uh there's actually uh, action in this. There's action. What action? Yes. Uh, things actually happened in this. Believe it or not, there was actually yeah, there there was action scenes in more than one page. Unlike Aquaman Andromeda. Yeah, Tom Taylor. You need to slow down there, Speed Racer. I mean, all this testosterone is a bit too much for me, you know, for more than one page. Uh, the, yeah, the only really off-putting stuff, and this was with, with Barbara. And all of it. it all felt incredibly out of character, including having sex in front of with Nightwing in front of the bad guy. No. Really? Having, literally, having sex with Nightwing in front of the bad guy. I, I guess she loves being watched. I guess. She, Who doesn't? Apparently, well, Joker did have the camera when she was so. She, maybe she does like being watched. She's traumatized. Yeah, she, she likes. She does, yeah, she likes that. Yeah, uh, people doing this. People doing things out of character. Hey, it's a Tom Taylor comic. That's what people do. Mm -hmm. Things out of character, like John Kent. Yeah, everyone's out of character. So yeah, yep. And it's it, the top ten. But, yeah, it's not bad. It's fine. It's action packed. It's kinetic. It moves. I gotta give him credit for that. He oh, actually God. told an action packed comic. You know, it, without an agenda. I'm shocked. So. Okay, kudos to him. He can do it. He just chooses not to. Now, sure. explain this piece of crap. Yeah, Aquaman Andromeda Strain number three. We finally wrap it up, and it's good. I, I liked it. What sells this, what all three, it's the art. Oh. You really, like the oversizedness of this, it's re it really does well with the art. Mm -hmm. I love the way Aquaman is drawn in this. And the, the grief, the heartache, the stuff that some of these characters have gone through, I did say earlier, it is a lot like Event Horizon and sphere yes it's like yes they pull along this it's like what's this ship doing to you is it's evil is it making you see things that aren't really there is it making you relive all of the trauma in your life and, and would you rather be watching samuel jackson uh eating onion rings that he doesn't realize are fried calamari and yeah then, <laughs> and then just, I, i'd rather read yeah i'd rather watch that yeah i'm i'm judging this as a whole all three issues were good it was a solid story, had a beginning, a middle, and an end, and I was happy with it. So, yeah, I'm going to give this a recommend. Okay. We're going to have to disagree on our tip number 10 of the week. Go right so ahead. There we go. Slay queen. But in the meantime, we're on to number... Number nine of the week, I got Fables 156. I have Debt Dealer. Number six. You are a little more forgiving on that than I was. Was. Once again. Uh, why don't you go ahead and explain? All right. This isn't the story I wanted. Nope. It's not. This isn't the story anybody wanted. Nope. Not when you read Death Dealer. No, it's not. No, it is um, not. The dialogue from the wizard in this makes no fucking sense. Nope. And I don't know if that was on purpose or not. I really don't know. I, I really, truly, deeply believe it was on purpose. Yeah. If that was, it it doesn't fit. No, it doesn't. With at all. any of this. Like no you said, he's written like the dude yeah. in modern day. I, I was completely caught off guard, but the art is absolutely gorgeous in this. Y you are correct. So I had to give it a pass because of the art alone. Mm -hmm. And I'm ho in hopes that the next issue we will actually get Death Dealer with this sorceress enchantress. Mm -hmm. Enough of her fucking around in the woods, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, let's go. So... Yeah. Get on with it! Basically, yes. Yeah. So that's why it gets a pass because of the art. Okay. I got Fables 156 by Bill Willingham. Uh, yeah, this you. was just fun. I enjoyed this. We get the dark version of Peter Pan. 
Tinkerbell, and it's great. I love what's been done here with Peter Pan. It is terrific. Dig it. This was swift, not boring in the least at all, had shocks and surprises. I can't complain in the least with this. Very well illustrated. Fables 156. Terrific. Love it. Yes. Okay. I don't right. read Fables, so. No, that's why I didn't give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I threw it away. All right, Rhonda. Number eight, I got Times United Blood Pack, number two. I have Phantasmagoria, number two. Okay. Um, I was. Uh, you hated this. Yes, I did. Absolutely. You now explain it. to me why you loved it so much. It should be number eight. I said it's not as good as the first issue. I loved the first issue. The first issue was very good. Uh, still a fun read. I love the London Penny Dreadful aspect of this horror story. We got two wizards fighting over souls. One's good, one's nefarious. Mm. Obviously. Obviously. Um, I like how the characters are written in this. I think they're written incredibly well. I like the pacing of it. I think it's exciting. I think it's fun. It does remind me of the show Penny Dreadful a lot. I love the art in this. I think it's terrific. I think it fits the story perfectly. Um, I have a lot of fun with this. I'm excited to see where it goes. I didn't. I had the complete opposite reaction to it. It's clearly. Yeah, yeah, it's clearly. All right. Teen Tintins. Yeah. United. Blood Pack number two. This was very fast paced action-packed, and kinetic. I loved it. This is how you do a comic book mm. at DC. Terrific, oh. yeah. Yeah, we see what happened to the heroes in this alternate Earth. There's a different Batman. It's a tad different. Mm. Yep. And at the very end, our heroes may be in some unexpected deep trouble. I loved it. What's this leading to? Yeah, great art as well. This was a lot of fun. I. This is primetime DC comics right here. Yeah. Mm. Traditional storytelling. I love it. Good. Yes. Better than bad, it's good. Just like okay. a blog. Same with Phantasmagoria. How about that? I'll have to disagree with you there. Okay. All right. All right. On to number seven. 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 We got DC vs. Vampires All at War 4. Hey! Same. How about that? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, this, this issue, this was literally All at War in this issue. Yes, it was. I said, all this is how you do an event story. Yeah. This issue right here. All at war. Yeah, Matt Rosenberg, he, I mean, uh, I honestly, I, people on YouTube will disagree with me. Some. <laughs> I, I think he's only gotten better. I think he's really gotten better as a writer. And I think this is some of his best stuff right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, tons of blood, fights, deaths, heads blowing up, uh, maybe some sunlight for a certain Kryptonian. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, this was just a blast to read. Yeah, this is a recommend if I've ever had one. Yeah, I, I liked how everything in this has consequences. Yes. And mm -hmm. stakes and weight. Mm -hmm. And there's weight to the action and there's weight to the deaths. Unlike Dark Crisis on Infinite Earth of the multi-house secrets of mm -hmm. Civil War secrets. Yeah. yeah. All of that. Yeah. Like, this feels like, oh, shit. Like, mm -hmm. you don't want anybody to die because there's so few of them. Yeah. And when they start getting pecked, it's like, damn, like, what are they going to do? I mean, there's so few of them. I just, it, everything has weight and a purpose to it. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting and it's enthralling. The only thing, it's like the art could just be a little bit better because I have a hard time in some of these panels picking out <coughs> who certain characters are because they're all kind of drawn the same. Yeah. And it, it usually, I mean, it does, because it, it has, it, it could work better if their bodies were better detailed with, with their traditional costumes where so you know who they were who, but the artist kind of didn't get the memo on that. Yeah. Cause you got Midnighter and you mm -hmm. got Azrael and some of these people, I'm like, fuck is that i'm yeah. like it's just some guy in a long coat or something and they're, and they're like, all wearing long coats <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, that, that doesn't tell. help either yeah. yeah i don't know who's who but aside from that it's it's a nitpick mm -hmm. um so from dc i have to applaud them for doing something right yes so which is a rarity these days yes it is yeah so i'll take it that's a yeah. win yeah mm -hmm. all right and that is that leads us to number uh Number six, I got Shirtless Bear Fighter 2, number nice. three. I have Miracle Man, The Silver Age, number one. So low. Legacy, number 23. So low. Yeah. Uh, so it's low. It's so good. Oh. Why don't you explain to me why it's so low? This is good. I said, you know, this was a good reintroduction to MM mm -hmm. and uh, YM. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so if you have no idea what's going on or anything about these characters, this was a perfect reintroduction Mm -hmm. to them because we're literally following the footsteps of somebody who comes back yes so it was a perfect mirroring of it's like okay 
if you have no idea who this character is and you've never given a shit, this will help you give a shit and understand this world and what's going on and left with some questions. It's a lot. There's a, there will be a lot, lot of, que- of questions like what's going on, mm-hmm. what time frame is it, where is this at, when is it taking place, like who are these people, what's going. It's like all these things. I love that you're following a, a character coming back to life, and it was yeah, it was perfect storytelling. And you get you know Neil Gaiman on it, obviously. This so. is this is prime time Neil Gaiman. Yep. This is back when Neil Gaiman was prime time, mm-hmm. and I'll explain to a little bit later on why yep. I think this is. This was awesome. I'll, I'll talk about yep. it. Later. I'll talk this about it very later. good. Yes. So I got shitless bear fighter two number three. I had yeah. He, so shitless bear fighter. He travels to Japan. Learns about his uh, true family lineage, fights ensue, and uh, hey, uh, you can't cause all this death and destruction without some consequences. Can't not just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was once again a very fun and fast paced read. I thoroughly enjoy it. This is mm-hmm. one of the best comics in printing right now. I love it. Wow. Yeah. That's high praise. Yes, it is, and rightfully so. This is hysterical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't read it. Of course you didn't. Mm-hmm. All right, on to the halfway point. Number five. We are. Not falling behind. Not showing off. Number five. I got, boom, Gunslinger Spawn. Hey, how about that? Weird. Gunslinger Spawn, number yeah, 13. 13. Yeah. Or is it just Gunslinger? It's, it's, so, yeah, we, we looked this up. So, technically, if you go on the inside flap of this, by the, the production notes and everything, it's titled Gunslinger. Yeah. It's that's just Gunslinger. Spawn. Yeah, not Gunslinger Spawn, Gunslinger. So, Gunslinger, mm-hmm. 13. Uh, I flip and love this issue. Once nice. again, yeah, the art is terrific by Brett Booth. And somehow, some way, he fooled me into thinking it was a, a different artist toward the end in a style like Lionel Francis U. No, yeah. That was Brett Booth. Yeah. I could not believe it. Mm-hmm. But it, it looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Gunslinger is on the hunt and he wants answers. It doesn't matter what it takes to get them from dragging a guy by horse or tying a guy on railroad tracks. I love it. And it's so beautifully told uh we're also getting a hint at the gunslinger's past as well which looks really damn good and once again i cannot recommend this enough this is this is not just the spawn series right now but i'm gonna say it right now this is the image comics series yeah 13 high quality action-packed issues so far and for how much 2.99 each 13 issues so far, $2.99 each. You cannot beat that. You can't beat it. Tom McFarlane, Brett Booth, $2.99. Sex. You yeah. can't beat that. That is amazing. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I love the the backstory with, with Javier and mm-hmm. what was going on with him yeah. and mirroring what he was doing mm-hmm. to somebody at some mm-hmm. point. It's like, oh shit, like that's what happened to him, potentially. Mm-hmm. Maybe yep. we don't know. It's like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. brutal. It is brutal. Yeah, it's, or his name is uh, Javi. Yeah. yeah. Javi. Yeah. And uh it's like, oh shit! Mm-hmm. It uh, it was great. Yeah, I love the art. It's perfect storytelling mm-hmm. is what this is—a mirroring of perfect words. Yes, with perfect art. Yeah. I mean, it's. I know. T- I, mean, I know a lot of people love to take shots at Todd, but th- this t- this is some of t- this is Todd's best stuff. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna say this is Todd's best stuff right here. Yeah. And in fact, he has Brett Booth doing cover work and interiors. And interiors. Take my money yeah. every day. This could be a six dollar book, and I I would buy it. Absolutely. I would buy it. But for the fact he's selling it for two ninety nine, yeah. I every issue and every issue has been a knockout. I, I yeah. yeah. When you stick with the same artist and writer, and, the, out, and it, yeah, you're not like some it's not like some hacks at Marvel DC who can't do it digitally for some reason. Yeah. You actually actually have a fucking talented artist like Brett Booth. Mm-hmm. Who who can keep up? Who is great and can meet deadlines? Unlike a lot of artists at Marvel or DC, mm-hmm. it, it's it's amazing what you can what can be done. This is arguably yeah, this is the best Image Comics book right now. I don't give a shit what anyone that. says about Chip Zdarsky's Public Domain or uh, the Closet, the Closet, or with, with Jim, James Tiny Onion and whatever mm-hmm. else, whatever bullshit else. Um, this is the series mm-hmm. at Image right now. You cannot beat the quality for the price at all. Yeah, it'd be worth an argument at least to see mm-hmm. what somebody else would be able to come out with. Hmm. Yeah, thirteen solid issues. That's hard to beat. I mean, so far, thirteen. 13 so, yeah, thirteen of thirteen. Same creative team on every damn issue. Yeah, no, none, of, none have been filler. They've all been killer. They have, and yeah, it's love. Yeah, it. It's hard to beat. Yeah. yeah. 
History in the making. Yes, it is. It absolutely, it really <laughs> truly is. Yes. Yeah. All right. We're on to number. Uh, Number four, I've got boom deceased. That, number three, I got Batman Superman World's Finest. Number eight. All right, I was expecting that to be a little bit higher, but um, okay, deceased were the undead guys. Number three. Uh, so you know, considering all the damage and destruction Tom King did to Adam Strange, yeah, and his family and Strange Adventures, what Tom Taylor does here is much more respectable. Mm -hmm. I mean, and hey, it, it feels a little bit more fitting in the end for this universe, I'll say, it does. as compared to what Tom King did. True. And then, <laughs> and then after that, we get the main man. Oh, yeah. I said, I said, I said to you <laughs> and actually Sean, one word, Lobo. Yeah. I, I, I will not say what happens after that. It is Lobo. It, it, we, then we, and at, after Lobo, we get... After that, with uh, we get Ares who shows up with uh, our heroes and he tells them one word, one god, older than any of them who's been uh, awakened to lead this dark army against the living Erebos. Mm -hmm. I think it's the first, I think it's the key for the for Erebos. Yeah, I looked oh. them up. I think this is, yeah, yeah. I, looked, I looked it up. I think this is the first. Uh, this is one of the highest recommends I'll have this year and this week. I, I truly, I love this book. I, I loved it, but it's so high. Yes, mm -hmm. wow, mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, World's Finest number eight. Uh -huh. I love this. Mm -hmm. I've loved every issue. Uh, this one continues down that same path mm -hmm. of awesomeness. Every character is written perfectly in this. So we got the new character being trained by the Teen Titans at the beginning. Yep. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved how the last issue ended. It's like, this makes perfect sense. It's like, no, we're going to let the kids hang out yeah. with the kid. It's like, yeah. no, we'll, we'll take care of it. And I love that. And... Where this goes, it's very deep and heartfelt. Well, yes. Incredibly, really like what yes. this character may or may not have done mm -hmm. in its past. It's like, wait, wait a minute. Are you saying? Wait, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's tasked with saving people, but then it's like, did he though? <laughs> we don't know because there's some crisis of conscience mm -hmm. he's feeling. Mm -hmm. And. David may be going through something, some type of turmoil mm -hmm. personally that we don't quite know yet, but everyone's like, no, no, he's fine. He'll be good. It's like, don't know. Yeah. He might not. Nope. Um, but I appreciate that. And I love how Superman is treated with the reverence and respect he fucking deserves in this. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, you won't be getting that from uh, Philip, Kennedy, Philip Kennedy Johnson no. or you know Tom Taylor. At, yeah, because we have Supergirl talking to David at one point and the respect she gives mm -hmm. Superman and why he is the way he is, mm -hmm. is exactly how he should be treated mm -hmm. and why he's fucking Superman. Yes. <laughs> I, I love the cliffhanger at the end of this too. Solid fun, solid recommend for this. Pick it up. Absolutely. I yeah. agree. All right. So we're on to the top three of the week. Here we go. Top Number three. three. Number three. Prime time, baby. Number three of the week. I've got boom, Moon Knight, Holy number sixteen. Yeah, shirtless bear fighter Holy two, number three. Shit. <laughs> wow. Yes, I truly love Moon Knight number sixteen. So yeah, Moon Knight. Yeah, he's going down. He's going down to Chinatown, and he wants information. He wants to know. He wants to. He wants to bring down the structure. So he's calling in his debts. I love it. Uh, but naturally, things don't go according to plan. Wouldn't you know it? Yeah, and we get the origins of the structure as well. They come from who's running it, and. Uh, some pretty kick-ass fights drawn by Alessandro Capuccio. Love the fight scenes. I think his interior art is only getting better. Mm -hmm. I really, truly do. And I love how the beef with Moon Knight is all over a misunderstanding. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. Just how the structure took what Moon Knight's actions as a complete misunderstanding. It was terrific. I loved it. Perfect. Uh, that's that's the way of life. That's how, they, that's how beefs happen. Complete misunderstanding. Step on my shoe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of this, holy shit, uh, uh, there's major stakes and maybe a major death. Maybe. I don't know. But hey, I love it. Recommend. Moon Knight number 16. Yep. It's something all right. Mm. <laughs> Seeing vampires fight with screwdrivers. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something. Shirtless Bear Fighter 2 number 3. So we get the origins of Shirtless, as you mm -hmm. said, and mm -hmm. it's shocking. Yes, it is. And what happens? Um, he doesn't quite believe where he came from. Mm -mm. And I absolutely love it. And then, yeah, he gets accused of animal cruelty. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you know it? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Biagi is. 
is hurt to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and where he ends up at the end doesn't look good. He doesn't have mm -hmm. a he's not a, he doesn't have a very good lawyer. <laughs> nope, no, he doesn't. No. <laughs> I love the series and um yeah, something happens in this and it's like, but it wasn't him. It could mm -hmm. be maybe an imposter. Sure, yeah. An imposter? Yeah. Could be an imposter. Yeah. You don't know. But yeah, I absolutely love this series. Mm -hmm. It makes me laugh. Every page is hysterical. Mm -hmm. I love it. Pick this up and read it. You will laugh your ass off. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. solid recommend for this. Pick it up, read it. Tripless Bear Fighter. Two. I agree. And we're on to number. Number two, I got X-Men. I'm sorry. <laughs> Batman and Superman, World's Finest nice. Eight. I have Deceased, War of the Undead Gods. I can't fault you for that at all. Yeah, yeah. that is. Thank you. Holy shit. Yeah. This opening to this book, now it's just the beginning. That was, before Lobo shows up. Yes. Yeah, with Adam Strange. I was just yeah. like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, it, I, didn't, I didn't see it coming, really. Mm -hmm. And then you get the main man showing up. Yes. And I absolutely loved it. Yes. I, it was fucking perfect. Like, his, it, it, when you see his introduction, you just have so much fun reading it. Yes. It's like, can we have, can we, can we have Lobo in the Dark Crisis, please? Can we have, can we just have Lobo in everything, please? Yeah, it's like, where is he? Yeah, we need Lobo in Dark Crisis. We need Lobo showing up. Yeah. It'd be nice. It would yeah. be kind of fun if he just yeah. kind of shows up. Yeah. Shows up, like, riding some dolphins, like, space dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? At that point, uh, sure. He <laughs> well, he's got, he's, got, he's got the fetish for dolphins. So. That's true. Yes. Well, he kills Superboy. Yep. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> and saves the day. Just rips his neck. And yeah. just like, what? Did everyone, did everyone else want that? <laughs> he's yeah. evil, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was bad. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Stop me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do something. Yeah. <laughs> I loved his intro in this. I don't want to spoil anything of what happens because every every page turn was just absolutely no glorious. No panel or page is wasted with him. No. It was perfect. Yeah. I love this story. This thing came out of real this really came out of nowhere. Yeah. For the most it's part. It's hard. It's like really when you read this and you compare it to what Tom Taylor is doing with the Dark Knights of Steel, that yeah. crap, or you read it compare it to his Superman crap, it's like these are two different guys. Has to be. I'm like, mm -hmm. and I'm still debating whether or not he actually wrote this or not. I know it's like Mir Mirko know. Tamaki with a dark detective. Exactly. It's like, I really don't think she wrote that. No way. Uh, and it's like, yeah, it's like you said, I really, it's hard to believe Tom Taylor actually wrote this because yeah. this is two different guys. This is, this is a lot of fun. The art's fucking fantastic. Every character is written perfectly in this. They are. And it's, it's just really fun. I'm yeah. just laughing my ass off. So, and it's scary. Yeah, it absolutely so, is. Yeah. Yeah. This is a strong recommend this week. <laughs> I love it. All right, World's Finest. Yeah, World's Finest. Uh, Batman Superman number eight. Yeah, so David, yep, becomes uh, the boy Thunder, mm -hmm. and he has his first real test as a hero. And initially, he's it doesn't go according to plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we, we also do get a great use of a great Silver Age villain and a cameo of another D great DC hero just mm -hmm. shows up. But great cameos in this. Terrific. But by the end, there's a very powerful and great conversation between Supergirl and David that's very true to life. And after that, we get teased with a, a terrifying villain popping up next. I can't wait. And as well as, you know, something that may or may, David may or may not have done. We don't, I mean, we maybe? don't know. I don't, we don't know. It's like, wait a minute. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. We don't, don't know. Yeah. I love this issue. I love the series. Wade and Mora are kicking ass right now on this. It is terrific. I agree. I, I agree. I agree. So we are on to number... Number one, I've got Deadly Spider-Man. Okay, makes no, sense. No. Miracle Man, Silver Age number one. Silver Coin, 15. I'm going to let you start. Where to start with this? This is why I love, this is back to why I love Silver Coin. Mm. This is back to what makes this series so amazing. I love this story. The character study on this guy who feels the need and urge to feed the coin, but the coin is never full. I love the panels in this where... It, it's basically going through the entire series up to now of you you see the the camp the, what somebody died in the camp and it, at the bottom it just says more and more and more and more every pay every page every panel was 
an issue of the book and what the coin was wanting to do and how it was constantly needing to be fed. And then this guy at the end thinking he's finally got it. He's like, no, I'm here. And the coin's like, what are you an idiot? I'm just using you right now. Like you're near nothing to me at this point. And this guy's like, no, 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 this was my whole life. This is what I wanted. I've killed everything. I've done everything. Not enough. Needs more. I, I loved it. It's like, it's that you're nothing to me. You're just another pawn in this game. And I absolutely love it. You're just another soul. I love this fucking issue. This was amazing. Strongest. This is probably my favorite issue. I, I'm pretty sure this is probably... I have to go back to read some of the early ones, but this is probably my favorite issue. I know Fridays, we do our weekly recap, I think. Oh, yeah. Typically, there aren't one or two... Like There's like those that like, I have no need to reread, re and it sounds like this one, I may have to. You may have to. Okay. I would. All right. It's the highest of recommends for this. Uh, so, speaking of highest of recommends, yeah. I got Miracle Man, the, the Silver Age, number one. Mm -hmm. So... This is a remastered reprint of Miracle Man 23, which is now in high amount and demand, as all Eclipse comics books are at yeah. this point. Um, so it's, uh, it's it takes place in 2003 or 19 EM, the era of miracles. I like that. I love that. Young Miracle Man uh, is being awakened from his slumber or resting spot, if you will. Yeah. Um, so Neil Neil Gaiman. Uh, does a good job of catching us up, to, uh, as well as uh, the character as to what's happened in the world. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to spoil it, but a lot has changed. And these, and what's great as well, what's set up in this issue, you haven't read, if you haven't read it before, is that these superpower people, these kids, to having superpowers, it it's all games. Yeah, you can get that from all, very beginning. very beginning from Jump Street. It's all all the destruction. It's just games. Especially with some towers. That yeah, off. It's exactly. Like, yeah, it's just like, oh, fuck. yeah, the concept of being heroic, it's, it's lost at this point. It's just just playing games at this point. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it nothing is being taken seriously. Mm -hmm. There's a great moment at the end with uh, with this young Miracle Man when he changes back to his, God. yeah, and it's, it is safe to say, like, I'd have the same reaction too when he's pretty much told everything, everything. that's happened. Yeah. And uh, Mark Buckingham's art in this is terrific. Uh, and Neil, of course, kicks ass in this issue. Uh, but Mark Buckingham, so, so the thing with this, Mark Buckingham went back and he's remastered and redone his art, which is great. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but one question I do have, I tried looking this up online. I couldn't find any answers. I asked you if you, no you noticed it too. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't, I, I, I want, I'm hoping a viewer knows this because I, I love Miracle Man. I do. I, I dug deep into this, and I'm hoping someone can explain this. Can someone please explain to me why Miracle Man's logo is missing from the covers and the interior art? It's like on all the variant covers, the main cover, mm -hmm. it's gone. the the MM logo is it's just yellow, and on the interior art, it's gone. It's just blank. Yeah. Uh, I don't get it, and I can't find anything online stating why it's mm. gone. It's just blank. Yeah, it's it's one of those. It's it's a small thing, but at the same time, it's kind of a big thing when you see it on multiple panels. It's like, why is the logo missing? Yeah. It's like if you see Batman walking around, there's there's no yeah or Superman. Bat, with no Superman that's it. Like, wait a minute, something's wrong here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um. So anyway, what I'm going to get to next is that I know Sean and others obsess over Neil's uh, Neil Gaiman's uh, Sandman <laughs> stuff, yeah. which in my opinion, I'm going to say it's very overrated. I'll say that it is very overrated. <sighs> uh, so um. This is where it's at. This is prime time Neil Gaiman right here. Miracle yeah. Man. His this Miracle is... Man stuff. It, uh, I know people yeah, oh, just pretty much bust a load in their pants over Neil's Sandman stuff, which I don't. I read the first volume. Okay, I got it. Don't need to read the rest. Uh, nothing trumps his Miracle Man work. I'm going to leave it at that. And if they've never read his Miracle Man work, then no. they're missing out. You are really, really missing out. Uh, this is where it's at. Miracle Man. Silver Age, number one. My pick of the week. You have to read this. It is fantastic. It's great having Miracle Man back. It is. It was great when he was explaining his origin. Yes. <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, no. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's like oh. what, what, Miracle, what, what young Miracle Man believes yeah. his origin. And, and Miracle like, Man is like, no. Yeah, no. it's like, yeah, everything you know, no. Yeah. It's all wrong. And it, it, the cool thing is, I I think at least, is that when you read that, because he's summed up in 
a couple panels and, and on a page, if your mind is blown by that, it, the Marvel is reprinting the omnibus of the, the past issues, mm -hmm. and you can find the reprinted issues that Marvel has done. Mm -hmm. They are terrific reads. I remember I remember reading those in high school, and my mind was just blown. And to me, to this day, Miracle Man is one of the best things I've ever read in my life. I love it. Um, I, I really, truly hope people do seek this out and get this. I, we're going to Baltimore. Mark Buckingham's going to be there. I'm taking this to him. I'm going to have him sign it. You know, I can't wait. This is my old copy. going to have him sign them. Yeah, I had so much fun with this. It's great. Great having Miracle Man back and seeing uh, Neil Gaiman's best work. Yes, I said that in back in printing. So there you have it, guys. Uh, top 10 of the week. Weird. Yes. Man. It was a very – this is the, the most off top 10 we've ever had, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Are we 100% correct? 1% incorrect? 0% incorrect? Let us know in the comments. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. It's down there somewhere, usually. And we'll see you guys again on uh, Friday, hopefully Friday. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, and Thursday. We're going to go see Black Adam on Thursday. We'll probably do a couple short videos from the theater. Sure. Yep. Uh, like talking about uh, Black Adam. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see you guys again next time.